what's up guys it's me Barth and I've been using the MacBook Pro with the touch bar for like three months now and in these three months I've been fully on it I've edited so many videos on this machine some of which you've already seen some of which you will be seeing in fact this video itself was edited on this machine but I guess after using it for so long I will be able to give you a review in a very expansive and comprehensive manner so if you look at it from a macro point of view the aesthetics haven't really changed a lot I mean it for the most part looks like its predecessor except for one thing and that is the IO the ports it's got four ports actually five including the headphone jack but the rest four are usb type c port and i am completely aware of the fact that it's very inconvenient to have just usb type c ports but most of the people who own this machine have actually already gotten used to it including me and actually there is an easy fix to it either you get a lot of dongles or you get this and be done once for all this is a usb hub that i use from habit and it's got three usb type a ports a usb type c port an hdmi port and an SD card slot so it's pretty much the only thing that I need and this is what I would recommend you so I'll leave it linked below but the MacBook Pro is actually a lot better dimensionally it's a smaller lighter and a thinner hardware than the last year but just like the last year the construction is still on a completely different level it's a unibody metal construction and this time it's completely metallic even the hinge the edges for some reason are really sharp and I actually really appreciate that so overall the build quality the design the finish of the macbook pro remains unparalleled in the entire industry but all above this once you pull up the lid of the laptop that's where you'll find everything different firstly the trackpad yeah you already know it's twice as big as the previous one it's probably bigger than the phone that you are using right now but i didn't really find it that odd or uncomfortably big the first time i saw it in fact got used to it the first time i saw it and i actually really appreciate the extra space as it allows for seamless gestures and really enjoyable surfing as you don't really have to lift your hands up every once in a while plus it's great during video editing since i have to constantly scroll around my timeline so according to me a great great amendment done to the trackpad next the keyboard this for me is one of the best new features of the machine it has a completely different feel to it thanks to the second generation butterfly mechanism which powers it i won't really explain it to you because you might not even care about it but what you definitely care about is how it responds to your fingers and trust me it's amazing firstly just like the 12 inch macbook it has a very very low travel so it would feel very weird initially so sometimes you would feel you've pressed the key but the machine didn't really register it and sometimes even the vice versa would happen you'll be okay you don't really need to panic because eventually you'll get used to it like i did and now there's just no way going back I am absolutely fond of the keyboard, especially the sound, it's really grown on me. And I also type just as fast as I used to previously on all the other keyboards that I used to use. And also like the 12 inch MacBook, each and every key has an individual LED beneath it. So the light doesn't leak out of anywhere, kind of gives it a very minimal and satisfying look. But yeah, of course, the most talked about addition in the new MacBook Pro is without any doubt the touch bar, the flagship feature of this new flagship laptop. Top. But before I start talking about my experience with the same, let me first talk about the technology inside. So I don't know if you've noticed this or not, but the part of the touch bar, which is actually not in use, remains black. I mean, literally black, which is actually a very smart decision by Apple. And I'll tell you why. So the touch bar is an OLED strip. And the thing with an OLED panel is that in order to produce a black color, the pixels just don't light up at all. So not only it gives you the best blacks, but it also prevents the display from soaking in a lot of power from the machine it is hooked onto, basically meaning it is power efficient, but the MacBook Pro is still a sucker in the battery department. But coming back to the touch bar, I guess all the apps made for the MacBook Pro, both by Apple and third parties, pretty much none of them light up the entire pixel sheet beneath the touch bar. There is always a fraction or a tiny bit of space left where the pixels just don't light up at all, probably to make touch bar power efficient. And it's great because it also gives you breathing space. So it's like a win-win situation. But it's also great that Apple hasn't really compromised on the brightness of the same, so you can view 
it at a normal viewing angle, although it's not as pixel dense as I had expected it to be, but you never really peek into it, so I guess it's fine. But as far as the functionality is concerned, for me it has been very convenient. Honestly, it's one of those features that is really cool and practical at the same time. I mean, there is pretty much no app that I don't use it in. So in messages, it displays the words that I'm most likely to type next, basically makes the keyboard a predictive one, and it also displays all the emojis in a ray to choose from, which is both cool and functional. It also acts as a scrubber when you're watching any video in QuickTime or you're listening to music in Spotify. But for me, it is at its best while editing in Final Cut Pro, where it is actually the most convenient. I mean, it's great to scroll, to chop, to add audio stroke or to change the tool and much, much more. It's got a huge list of options. And honestly, I've been using the touch bar more than the keyboard in Final Cut Pro now. But honestly, the real game would start when the third party developers start taking advantages of the touch bar. Till then, it's a great tool, although it probably isn't a faster method to interact with your machine. It's just one of the new methods to use your hardware. Another thing that gets added in the new MacBook Pro is Touch ID. Oh, and by the way, that fingerprint sensor is actually a physical button, so it literally presses down, in case you didn't already know. But Touch ID is great. It's not only used while logging into the device, but you can also use it to download any app, to make purchases via Apple Pay, or to allow to make any changes. Basically saves a lot of time. It's just as fast as that on the iPhone, but I guess it's more reliable and more persistent than that of the iPhone. The next visible amendment is on the display. It's just way better than the last one. Firstly, the bezels have been reduced quite a lot and it overall looks really nice, but that display itself is just fabulous. It's literally one of the brightest displays I have ever seen. It's got a 500 nits of brightness. One nit is approximately the light emitted by a common candle. It's also very accurately saturated, at least according to my satisfaction, but all over this, it packs a really high resolution, which gives it about 220 pixels every single inch. So when you combine this display with the incredibly loud speakers flanking the keyboard on both the sides, it makes the MacBook Pro a spectacular device to not only consume media, but also to edit and produce content on. If you haven't seen it yet, you've got to go to the store and listen and watch the MacBook Pro. Pretty sure you'll be blown away. But now coming to the hardware inside the device. So in case you missed it, this is the 15 inch MacBook Pro with the base configuration. So I got a 2.6 GHz quad core processor, which is the 6th generation Skylake and not the 7th generation KB Lake. Apple says that the Skylake processors have been specifically oriented for the new MacBook Pro and they don't really compromise on the performance. And I actually tend to believe that because it has been performing really well, although not a huge improvement from the previous MacBook Pro. I'm not going to go deep into the performance aspect because I've done a full dedicated performance review of this machine in which I've compared it to the last generation and that's pretty much everything you need to know about the performance so you gotta check that out. Next Apple went for 16 gigabytes of RAM uh, and there has already been quite a lot of debate regarding the absence of 32 gigabytes of RAM but I guess this is a very subjective matter because I know people who have been finding 16 gigabytes to be pretty low but then for me 16 gigabytes has been doing really great I mean I have never really ran out of memory even when I have Final Cut Pro, Audition, Photoshop all open at the same time. So I would like to stay away from that debate. But there is one thing that I like to complain about and that is the storage. So since this is the base model, I got 256 gigabytes of SSD. I have to admit it's really hard to manage all of our stuff in such a limited storage, especially while you're producing content. So I find myself constantly taking backups and there is no issue in that. I know external hard drive is an easy fix to this such a limited storage but when you keep on doing it again and again and again and again and again and again it is very time consuming and it takes away from your precious minutes in which you could have produced content in which you could have done a lot of productive work that is an issue 512 gigabytes of ssd is a must considering the price that you pay for this machine it is a must but anyways, as far as my day-to-day -day experience is concerned, I'll start off by saying that this is a really quiet machine. Since I mostly use it for video editing and producing content, I'll be honest, it never really got hot while editing or rendering. Although that does not really mean that it doesn't get hot. It does get uncomfortably hot, especially above the touch bar when I use it while it's plugged to the charger. But the only time I could hear the fan spin was literally while watching some YouTube videos. 
courtesy of Adobe Flash. So the vents flanking the bottom left and right sides intake all of the air from the outside and the one beneath the hinge exhales all of the hot air from the system. It's kind of annoying because it really makes it very uncomfortable to use the laptop on my lap due to all the hot air passing through the hinge. So I kind of have to use it on a table or wear full pants. But last but not the least, let me talk about the battery life because that's one of the most crucial aspects. So to give you a little bit of background, I'm running on the 10.12.3 firmware of Sierra and a lot of reports, articles and reviews on the web say that it has enhanced the battery life of the MacBook Pro. Even Consumer Reports has now recommended the machine to the consumers. But to be honest, I haven't experienced any improvement in the battery life. But to give you an idea and estimate, I can literally kill the battery on this machine if I continuously edit a video on Final Cut Pro for about 3 hours. Not even 3 hours, probably less than that. But if you do some casual stuff, then you might pull it off throughout the day. But I doubt anyone would buy a $2700 machine just to do some casual stuff not really happening. So that's been it. This is my take on the MacBook Pro with the touch bar. I've been using it for so long and actually I'm loving it. It sure has a lot of cons but it sure has a lot of pros. I hope you enjoyed watching this. I hope you had a fun time watching this and if you did feel free to share it, feel free to rate it, feel free to embed it and I'll catch you in my next one. I promise I won't delay on that. Thank you for watching.